Okay, so it's been a long time. It's been months. And uh, the next lecture is the fall, which is lecture 21 from the pathwork.org. Greetings in the name of the Lord. Blessed are all of you, my dear friends. I talked to the last, I talked the last time about how evil came into existence. And I have to take my glasses off. The question has bothered many people who cannot imagine how a God of love could permit the existence of evil. For those of you here for the first time tonight, it would be advisable to read the last two lectures in order to understand this lecture, which is a continuation. Briefly, I have explained how long before the existence of the material world, a part of the created beings who have been endowed not only with free will, but also with a certain power, have abused this power. Hmm. I have explained how this came about in a very slow process. This fall of the angels, as it is called, has happened very slowly. A slow process of degeneration, it might be called, whereby everything divine very slowly and gradually turned into its opposite aspect. And with this, a separation occurred between those who abused their power and those who did not. I have often said, and this applies to all beings, spirit or man, that your attitudes, your opinions, your feelings, your thoughts create the spiritual worlds, even though you may still live on earth. Thus, you each create the world which will be yours. In the same way, the spirits participating in the fall created new worlds according to their changing attitudes. Dark worlds, worlds that are often referred to as hell. The attitudes of disharmony and hatred created according to forms. There is not just one possibility in this aspect. Excuse me, let me read that again. There is not just one possibility in this respect. Let us suppose, for instance, that a being in its perfect state had as a particular characteristic a great strength of love, the fire of divine love. This love force would turn around into its opposite and create a fire of hatred and wickedness. Thus, a fiery world in a very disharmonious way would come into existence. So you see, all these legends are not as unreal as they might appear to you. So let us suppose another individual in his perfect state of development had the particular characteristics of wise, calmness, judgment, and detached reflection. These attributes would enable such a being to further the divine creation in a particular way by slow unfoldments of this special creative power. Directed into its opposite force, this would create a world of icy coldness, of icy darkness and desolation. So there are many more possibilities how the infinite variety of divine attributes can change into its opposite nature and create the corresponding world in the world of darkness, just as there are infinite possibilities in the divine worlds. These spheres of fire or icy coldness in the spiritual sense, of course, are just two examples. There are the spheres of slime and dirt. There are the spheres of intense suffering, through overcrowding or through isolation, and many, 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 many infinite varieties. Since one of the most important divine aspects is free will and liberty of choice. This had to turn into the opposite, too. The spirit who was the first to succumb to the temptation of abusing this power, who was sometimes referred to as Lucifer or Satan or the, dark, or the devil, who influenced and affected others to follow him, would naturally be the first one in this world that came into existence. And he would, have complete, he would have complete power over all those who followed him, and contrary to God, he would use this power. God gives the freedom of choice, and this has a deeper significance. Excuse me. God gives us the freedom of choice, and this has a deeper significance than most of you realize. With that freedom, the possibility to abuse the power given, to use it contrary to divine laws, must perforce exist. If no choice were available, there would be no freedom and no power. There can be no divine happiness, in fact, no divinity at all, if it cannot be attained or maintained by free choice. 
By the same token, the opposite of God and his laws must, of course, be the prohibiting of such free choice and the domination of the stronger over the weaker ones. This state of affairs would seem insoluble as far as the salvation of these fallen, fallen beings is concerned. For even should they have come to the point of desiring to go back to God, they would not have the power to do so since they were under the the dominion and power of the one who reigns in this world of darkness. Sort of sounds like Trump. (laughs) Sorry. Um, On the other hand, how could God not break his own laws and still save those beings who long for him? If he would use his infinite power by overruling the free will and choice of those who decided to use the given power in their own way, he would actually do, in principle, the same as Lucifer. So here more than in anything else, to maintain the divine principle was of the utmost importance, the divine principle of free choice. For only by remaining true to himself and his laws would there be a fundamental difference between the ways of God and the ways of Lucifer. And since it is a plan, since it is the plan of God that every creature should at one time come back to him out of free choice and recognition and reattain divinity, it is imperative (laughs) that the garbage get picked up. Uh, uh, It's so noisy. I'm so sorry. Okay, here we go. Since it is the plan by... Since it is the plan of God that every creature should at one time come back to him out of free choice and recognition and retain divinity, it was the imperative that he would not use the same means of force as his opponent, even though the purpose might be a good one. So it is not the end alone that counts, but very much the means too. Hmm. Only by remaining true to these principles would the most stubborn of the fallen beings one day see the vast difference of these two ways and the dignity that lies in these divine principles, even though it means a path of suffering for those who wish to get out of the self-created miserable circumstances. Since life and spirit is in direct relationship to the inner harmony, enlightenment, and general attitude, spirits who had become disharmonious cannot simply put into a world of harmony as you might travel into a beautiful country. In spirit, the country is you, your product. Therefore, the once fallen spirits had and have to attain a state where they naturally produce again the harmonious world, and that this can only be accomplished in the slow process of development as the fall with its degeneration has happened is natural enough. And that this must happen in free choice too. You will now readily understand so that questions like why has God not done away with evil, etc. will not come up anymore in your deliberateness. On the other hand, means had to be found so that those creatures who desired to return to God and to keep his laws instead of the Luciferic, the Luciferic ones, could do so within the framework of the laws of God whereby the free will of no one would be broken not even of Lucifer himself. And this is the great plan of salvation in which Christ played a major role. And this I will talk about in more detail next time. So these spheres of darkness first came into existence where the spirits lived under the dominion of Lucifer. At first there was no longing, no sense of the light they had once possessed. Only after considerable testing of the self-chosen medicine, from with all its desolation, a vague longing for something else, they did not quite know what, took hold of some of these beings. And of course, it goes without saying that the memory of God and his worlds was extinguished in the measure that disharmony had set in, but revived again as the attitude changed but the latter could only occur in an exceedingly slow process. Spiritual darkness annuls knowledge. That's really interesting. Spiritual darkness annuls knowledge as spiritual light is knowledge. Just as with human beings, if you have no spiritual enlightenment, you have to work spiritually in order to regain certain glimpses of this light. The vague longing that at first some 
and later more creatures felt was sufficient to bring a glimmer of light into their world, as though a faraway dawn changed the contours of their world a little bit. The cold would not be quite so cold anymore, the fire not so hot anymore, the filth not quite so filthy anymore, and the loneliness not quite so unbearable and hopeless anymore. When enough spirits came into this state of longing and this longing increased, the time was right for the natural, excuse me, the time was right for the material world to come into existence. You may say that God created this material world, and this is true, for nothing can be created without the creative divine force. But it is equally true to say that the material world was created by this further longing for something higher. This world you are now living in is the product of this desire to strive higher. Where certain conditions exist in which development can proceed, in which a free choice for God can be made, which is impossible in the worlds of darkness. In other words, in other words, okay, in other words, this earth sphere is a product of the longing of the fallen spirits, but it is equally a product of the longing of all beings who remained with God, whose deepest desire is always is who excuse me, let me read it again, I got so excited. But it is equally a product of the longing of all beings who remained with God, whose deepest desire it always was and is to bring their brothers and sisters back to God. Therefore, both the divine worlds and the worlds of darkness helped in the creation of this earth sphere. And thus the influence of both worlds exists and will manifest according to the individual attitude of a being, which again has on this plane the power of free choice. Conditions and circumstances on this earth sphere are different, of course, due to this new form of matter. But then, circumstances vary in all spheres. Long before these fallen spirits were far enough to be born, excuse me, long before these fallen spirits were far enough to be born as men and women, the spiritual life force first acted and created other forms of life, not only animals, plants, minerals, but the original life force that works and manifests itself in each created being created, so to speak, other substances. Substances, of course, that were at first without knowledge, just as a plant or a, mil a mineral is without self-knowledge. But as time went on and on, more and more beings came into the state of longing for light. And this would perhaps constitute the only feeling these beings had at that time. Gradually, very gradually, man in his material form came into existence through various intermediate states. When this happened, a major phase was accomplished. For this was the time when the first glimmer of self-knowledge was born or reborn or became awake again, and more and more people came to live on earth. And only with the self-knowledge, which includes thinking and deciding, can development take place. And in other words, self-knowledge is a necessary condition. All the forms of life previous to man only has led up to this point. You all know now that man produces his spiritual world. And on earth, where also the influence of God's world existed, he now had for the first time since after the fall the possibility to learn to change to turn to God and thus create a better world for himself in matter and in spirit. Into this world he would go after his material death and also when his body rested during sleep. And from this world he would receive inspirations and influences of all sorts. This is why development cannot proceed faster for all the incarnate beings, incarnated beings, for all the incarnated beings were at first so low in their development that they were constantly influenced by their own sphere. So if God's world would not have acted on this earth too, there would not have been any difference between the earth sphere and a sphere in the world of darkness, for only the influences of the latter would occur in either case. You must all realize, my friends, that I can only give you a very, very rough outline of all of this. This touches the very greatest questions which cannot be fully understood by any human being, for human language is too limited in the first place, and human understanding is also too limited. Therefore, as a rule, I do not even like to talk about all this because the main thing for you is to learn to know your own souls and thus to develop spiritually. However, man often wonders about these fundamental questions or merely in a spirit of superficial curiosity, but in good faith. 
in good faith and ignorance and wrong conceptions on some of these points may seriously hinder his development. So this is why I am charged to give this series of lectures, even though some of you may not yet have sufficient inner perception to sense and feel the truth and the deep significance all this has, not only generally, but also very particularly on your own lives. How did the influence of the world of God manifest itself? How did the influence of the world of God manifest itself? Could angels of God guide and inspire these human beings incarnated from the spheres of darkness and thus be in connection with them? This would be an impossibility since it is, according to the universal law, that man himself has to make the first step in order to receive help from the world of God. How could he make the step if his whole being was so coarse that he had no inkling of God, no idea of his world, no notion of what to do? On the other hand, God's world co-created this material earth and thus, according to the law of free will, had the right to have its influence manifest on earth. The answer is that pure spirits who remained in the divine world were incarnated at all times. To be sure, very few, but the influence of one such being outweighs by far the strength and the influence of a hundred creatures of the world of darkness. These spirits incarnated from the world of God brought with them the light, the love, and the wisdom. They fulfilled a great mission with their incarnation on earth, and their influence was much more far-reaching than might appear at first sight. With this influence growing steadily through the ages, the fallen spirits could, during their incarnation on earth, freely choose which side to listen to, the one reaching their lower nature or the one that seems to push them ever upwards towards as this path may be. Excuse me. Let me read that again. Um... With this influence growing steadily through the ages, the fallen spirits could, during their incarnation on earth, freely choose which side to listen to, the one reaching their lower nature or the one that seemed to push them ever upwards, difficult as this path may be. And by this free choice, God's law concerning this aspect was not violated. The communication with the beyond did not only take place through guidance and inspiration, but there always existed and always will exist a more direct form of communication, namely what you now call mediumship in various forms. And with that, <clears throat> excuse me, in various forms, with what spheres of the beyond depends entirely on the attitude, the goal, and the general development of the person in question. Not only the medium, but also the people using this channel. Needless to say, human beings who were fallen spirits, could not have any other communication in these early times but with the world of darkness. But the pure incarnated spirits had communication, of course, with the world of God. And this outweighed so strongly the danger and the damage of a communication with the Luciferic worlds that it was indeed worthwhile, so to speak. If communication with one world could exist, a connection with the other was always within the law. So if one would have been impossible, the other would have to be equally impossible. And this is, incidentally, where human beings make a great mistake in their reasoning. They claim that any communication with the beyond is luciferic and dangerous. Indeed, that only this is possible. Development could not have proceeded at all at these very early times in the, in, excuse me, at these very ter early times if the pure spirits who were at times incarnated, could not have made it a very direct connection with the world of God from with which truth could come to man. I guess that would be like Buddha, Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy. You know, there's, yeah, great beings. Um, Muhammad would probably also be, um, oh, there's so many great souls. Um, Krishna. An equal influence had to come from both sides. Just go back and make sure I didn't miss anything. But in order to have this benefit and remain within the framework of the divine law, as explained at the beginning of this lecture, an equality had to exist so that free choice of each individual could be made. An equal influence had to come from both sides. An equal influence means that pure beings of the divine world lived on earth because their strength always outweighs and outlasts the influence of evil. However, 
especially at these early times, there existed a great interchange between the material and the Luciferic worlds. These dark spirits claimed to be gods and favor mankind with all sorts of grants if man, in turn, would do what they dictated. And with the harm and danger, as I said, the few communications with the world of God made up for this damage a hundred times. Mm. The incarnated pure spirits had, on one hand, the enlightenment in themselves to spread divine truth, and on the other, the necessary requirements to be in communication with the world of God as instruments. For without this latter, not enough could be given mankind, because even though these pure beings had no evil in them, the material shell takes too much away for sufficient teachings to have been made out of their own selves. Interesting. Thus, truth was spread in the manner that humanity at each particular peri period was ready to absorb. Interesting. And this went on for a long time. So gradually, one of the one of the more excuse me. So gradually, more of the once fallen spirits came to the state in which they would and could recognize God. Thus, their longing became conscious and significant in its meaning. And thus the will could be developed to overcome the evil impulses and the lower nature. This change that began to take place had, again, a much greater effort, excuse me, a much greater effect as can be realized offhand. None of you fully understand that if a single person develops, really does the very best in his power, he does not only help himself, but he adds the most valuable cosmic power to a great reservoir which will ultimately have a very decisive effect and will spread considerably even though he himself may not even see a part of this effect. He may see some of it in his immediate surroundings how all of it, excuse me, how all of a sudden his fellow creatures begin to change a little bit due to his own change. But he will not know, as long as he is on earth, how far reaching the effect of his smallest endeavor is in this direction. No such endeavor is therefore ever in vain, my friends. It is, th it is as though you throw a stone into a pond of quiet water. There come rings and rings and rings, and they go as far that your eyes cannot see the rings of the outer periphery, but they are still there. Mm, it's beautiful. If one person overcomes a single weakness, this constitutes the best help in the great plan of salvation. And that's all I'm going to read. And that is chapter 21 of The Pathwork.